is no better way to end a game than with King Crush. So recently, I've been having a lot of fun with Recruit Hunter on Standard and on Wild Mode. Um, you've seen me publish a couple of videos. Um, and yes, and when a Shaman's Devolve gives you Duskfall and Aviana, and your minions cost zero, <laughs> um, I can't remember how much they originally cost. Well, it's the first minion that you play here costs zero. Oh. So yeah, I can't remember the original costs of my minions, which was annoying. Uh, but it's all good. He has one card in hand. And I have this endless generation of zombie beasts. So Deathstalker Rexar now has become my favourite my favourite death knight in all the game. Uh, just the generation of zombie bees to get you out of uh, situations that you find yourself in. Um, the chances are you will be able to find a beast that can solve a problem posed to you by the board. Uh, do you need a rush minion? Do you need a poisonous minion? Uh, a taunt? Uh, you know, there's different beasts that can get you out of uh, different problematic situations. Okay, so today, we are not playing Recruit Hunter again. Um, that little highlight at the start was just to express my joy at having found a way to make King Crush viable um, on the meta. But uh, today, I'm playing Cass's Reno C'Thun Hunter on Wild Mode. What possessed me to play C'Thun Hunter? I guess I was looking for something a little bit different, something that's off meta, and uh, C'Thun Hunter fits that bill perfectly. Now, there is Rena Jackson in this deck, um, so that's pretty good against aggro. Um, you do have Deathstalker Rexar, my new favourite Death Knight in this deck. Um, and of course, good old Cthune and his army of Cthune minions, or Cthune activators. Now, I've played a little bit of Reno Hunter over the last few weeks. You've seen me publish a couple of videos. Um, Dane, who is a phenomenal wild mode player, has been having a lot of success with Reno Hunter, and I played a couple of his decks. The question is, is, uh, well, are, get my grammar correct, are Cthune minions um, better than or just as good as the normal minions or spells that Reno Hunter would play. Um, because the whole idea of the Cthune minions is to buff Cthune, but on their own, are they good enough? Uh, Twilight Elder is a four health minion through attack. I guess that's decent. It's not terrible on turn three. It can trade into a couple of things before it dies. Cthune's Chosen has Divine Shield, but the two health is a little bit annoying. Um, Scarum Cultist? I don't think I've ever played that card before in a competitive deck. Even when I used to play Cthune Warrior back in the day, I don't think I ever played Scarum Cultist. Uh, so we're going to have a look at a few highlights of this deck in action. Um, and sometimes things don't work out. Yeah. When Kingsbane Rogue mills your Cthune... Incredible. You're just really, really sad. Um, but I wonder, as this game went on, you know, given all the damage that I was able to do, I think I could have won this game had Cthune not been milled. But uh, yeah, when they have a 13 attack weapon and you're hovering over the concede button because you're just waiting for your taunt to get removed, um, that's what Kingsbane Rogue can do to you sometimes. Um, and I love his name, you rope, me rope too. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, so yeah, sometimes things just don't work out with Cthun. But let's look at this one full game of this deck in action. Uh, I think I played, uh, uh, yeah, I played three to four games with the deck. And um, this is against a, a, an aggro paladin. And I'd actually already faced him in one game and I got absolutely thrashed. Uh, he just built up a board of dudes. And I couldn't win. I just couldn't win. Um, now, having a 1-4 taunt in a deck doesn't seem particularly good. But against aggro, um, it's actually pretty decent. It's actually pretty decent. Please be 
I mean, the one four there, the one attack, essentially makes it a dude killer. Essentially makes it a dude killer. Now, discovering a beast that does one damage AoE to the board, in my opinion, is game winning against Paladin. Uh, or against Dude Paladin, in this instance. Uh, it's just finding uh, the right time to play it, uh, i.e. when he's committed enough dudes and not buffed them yet. But, um, yeah, Dude Paladin, I've been facing so many Dude Paladins. Lots of Kingsbane Rogues and Dude Paladins uh, between ranks 3 and 2 on the Wild Mode ladder. I don't know what it is about Kingsbane Rogue. I mean, Dude Paladin I can sort of deal with. Uh, I, just pl I play a lot of Reno Lock, and Reno Lock can deal with Dude Paladin. So you have board clears, uh, yeah, you have AoE, uh, you, have, you, you have some taunts. But um, Kingsbane Rogue, oh, I just can't stand it. It's the deck that I dislike the most playing against in Hearthstone at the moment. I mean, I know there are some various tier lists out there that, d that don't rate it as tier 1, but it just seems that whenever I play against it, um, I'm usually playing as a control deck, and I don't know what it is, they, they always end up milling me massively, and I end up losing Reno, I end up losing uh, Gul'dan, I end up losing all of my good cards, and then they just win with a ridiculous dagger that keeps going face. That, that tends to be what happens. Now, I'd say Dread Scale being played here is pretty okay. I mean, that's five minions that it's just killed. And we've seen him play a weapon. So now, <clears throat> maybe he doesn't have another weapon in hand. So maybe he can't instantly remove this card. That means that any dudes he plays now going forward, they're just going to die. No dudes on board means no dudes that can be buffed. Frostwolf Warlord, a bit of a, 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 a desperation play there. Um, now, we've seen one Noble Sacrifice in this deck, so we need to test for a second one. So, we'll go face with the weapon to test. And it isn't Noble Sacrifice, interesting. Now, playing Conline Oracle is a risk here, because it's giving him more fuel. But looking at the cards that I've drawn, I think that's fine. I've drawn a Taunt, which is actually pretty important. Two Taunts, actually, which is uh, pretty important. And ideally, these Taunts can protect... Uh, they can protect my Dread Scale. Handle it! Handle it! Ooh, um, <clears throat> double handle it there. That's, uh, that's really a desperate play. Now, Flare. Um, wonderful against mages in wild mode who run ice block. But in this case, oh, it's competitive spirit. How interesting. Um, we need to get rid of both of those. So we can trade, trade, the face. And this synergy here. It's incredible. <laughs> Every time uh, I end my turn, there'll be one damage AoE, and my Cthulhu is going to get buffed. That's insane. That is actually insane. <laughs> Craze Worshipper, Dread Scale Synergy. New meta, uh, new meta defining synergies. <laughs> and he's really behind here. Um, because now I'm starting to build a board presence. Uh, I don't think there's much he can do. Oh, he's actually dead. Fancy that. Hmm. Sometimes you're just so sort of obsessed with um, clearing board that you forget there's actually lethal in play. <laughs> and uh, Cthune was not even needed. Wow. Um, so, this Reno Cthune Hunter deck. Oh dear, I, I, I managed to win one game with it, right? I managed to win one lousy game. I love, I love the fact that some people are still trying to make Cthulhu work. I really do. It's just that I don't know if Reno Hunter is sort of the correct... 
avenue for it, uh, the correct conduit for it. Uh, I still think that um, Cthulhu Warrior is perhaps a little bit better, but um, I think the key in this deck, beyond anything, and Cthulhu's okay once you play him and you get him down and he does his damage, he's okay, but I still think the best sort of finisher in this deck is Deathstalker Rexar, generating infinite value on Zombie Beast turn after turn after turn. I think that's actually better than Cthulhu. Um, but yeah, I, I appreciate the, the, I guess I'm going to call it innovation, the fact that people are still willing to try out Cthulhu and make it work. Um, yeah, I just would question some of the cards. Skerim Cultist, not so sure about in this deck, not sure if it works. Um, I like the inclusion of Zola the Gorgon, there's a lot of flexibility there. You can put your, uh, you can get your, uh, your Reno back to hand, you can get your Cthulhu back to hand. So that's, that's pretty awesome. I like the inclusion of Emperor. Because then, um, you know, you've got Bran and you have Cthulhu in this deck. And I, I do remember with Cthulhu Warrior back in the day, you'd use the Emperor to discount your hand and then try and fit Bran and Cthulhu uh, on the same turn if you were able to get a couple of turns worth of discounting. So that was always pretty awesome. Unfortunately, in the, in the small number of games that I've played with this deck, I've never had an opportunity to see that kind of value because against aggro, I just tend to be dead before anything good happens. Um, so anyway, uh, thank you very much for joining me, everyone. If you guys have any competitive wild Cthulhu decks uh, that you've been playing with, please post the links in the comment section below and uh, I may give them a try.